artist coming at you. Um, if you're new, welcome. If you've never seen me before. Uh, today we're working on this abstract. It's a uh, very tight, a lot of details. Um, we're going to be working on this pink right now in this video. You want to get different kinds of pink, especially that this one's like $45 a jar, man. Jeez, it's one of the best magentas out there. It, it is absolutely hands down my favorite. But what I was playing with was I was taking a little bit of different oranges. You know, um, this one here is, is uh, cadmium orange light, where you have cadmium orange dark, which would be like right there. That's dark. This lighter one here is more in this family right here. So anyway, uh, Lasco also makes their kind of pink. So this pink right here is a little bit... I want to test it out somewhere before I fully commit to how much I'm going to put on. Because we're talking variety here. You want variety. You don't, you don't want to just use the same pink everywhere. You know, so I got a little light, little pink. This pink is, is completely different. I don't want to cover up anything that I'm really, really in love with, so to speak. So I'm just putting like little little dashes and doodads of it here and there. Spreading the love. Because painting is love, I'll tell you that right now. You gotta love your job doing this. It adds in a lot of texture too, because you'll notice a lot of this, uh, some parts might be slippery, some parts uh, might be more of a, a matte finish, which is no shine. Um, but this is, pretty, this is a pretty tough paint. I don't know why people, some people think you have to clear coat this whole painting to protect it and have it. This paint's pretty tough. Once it dries, stuff is waterproof. I mean, what do you want? You're not hanging it in the sun. So you can kind of see this pink now starting to hold its own against the other ones. It, you know, and now... Now I have like three or four pinks just in that one area, which is just absolutely beautiful. Lots of variety, you know, and the knife gives it a, a texture, which is nice. Well, maybe we'll have to shoot a close-up of that for you so you could check that out. So here's a close-up. Uh, you can see right here, this is the new pink I just put on. Of course, the video makes it look a little bit more orange. So here you can see a nice close-up. You can see the texture. The, the knife does some wonderful things. You can, you know, you can scrape, get lines. It's, it's just, it's a whole different, whole different way of painting. You might really, really enjoy it. Give it a, give it a try sometime. There's all different sizes of palette knives, you know, shapes. You could do wonderful things with it. You can get dark without using black. Chocolate browns, um, eggplant purple, uh, hunter green, you know, charcoal gray. You can get dark uh, without having to use black. But just remember, black muddies up other colors. Brown and a navy blue. If you mix those two, you will get a like a perfect gray. It's so dark, you, you almost think it's black. So the black I have on here right now is uh, considered a leather black. It has a, just a moderate shine to it. But this one here, this is more of a, a matte black, but it's a, a true black, like a carbon black. Uh, don't worry about that pink, it's already dry. This stuff dries so fast, all this acrylic paint. It takes no time at all. So I just gotta figure where I want this here. I'm also comparing this black to the other black and of course I'm liking it right now because it's definitely, you, you can also use a more liquidy black. Don't forget to mix, mix it up. You know, sometimes I'll use a little heavy body and a little, and a little thin. I'm just doing this for the video. I don't really want too much uh, of this thin one. So what happens with the thin is, if I take some water, this, this is definitely going to bleed better. I have this on mist, not stream, so it sort of just flares out when it shoots. You don't want to... So there, 
you can already start to see the bleeding in there. So if you want this, this to kind of give this smoky type of look, the liquid black is the way to go. It is king. But if you want the black to stay, or the paint, any paint, this goes for all these colors. If you want it to stay where you put it and control it, you're going to use the, the heavy body, which comes out of the tube. So yeah, these, these two definitely make that other black uh, look a little wimpy. Here we are looking at this nice thick. See, it's, gonna, it's definitely going to stand up and leave, leave that texture. You know, if you want to see all those little ridges, I know it's wet, so it's very shiny. But as we pan around, you can kind of see the, the, you know, the thickness, the thickness to it. And especially with this, this brown, this is dry, but it has great texture. Look at that. And depending on which way you comb it, this way or that way, the light is going to do different things on it. Let me, uh, let me just show you a little bit more of what is going on. Yeah, you can see the bleeds with the black. Look at that. It's just running. But I like it. I'm going to keep it. I was kind of looking at this background color right here, the mauve type color. I really like that. But I do have a lot of it in this area, uh, in the upper region. So, but I just love this copper. I, I just want to see more of it. So I'm just trying to bring this full square from here to here. And so I'm just... Yeah, you could see how thick this stuff is really heavy I think it's getting a little bit old sometimes when the paint gets old it's real thick if you have a question about my touch because it's all in the touch uh, you see how that that paint is there I'm practically not even touching the canvas with the palette knife I'm just just kind of knocking almost like putting frosting on a cake I'm kind of just letting the paint touch the canvas uh, without any any of the knife it's, it's, see when I lay the knife down then, then you can see it's more like a smear you get more coverage like it spreads see it that there right there it's spreading but it also flattens it out you lose this texture so make up your mind whether you want the smooth flat or you want the texture because if you want the texture you just you just touch it you just barely touch it and then you can you can come this way give the grain a direction now I'm, try I'm also trying to keep within my my square design you can also dab and pick up see now look at all those peaks on the paint I just gave a texture do I want that texture do I not want that texture so I'm like I'm liking that. I know it's a little bit of a step here, but I might bring some of this color down here and and fulfill that square, which will mix those two colors. And that could be a disaster or it could it could be something uh, monumental and beautiful. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. You know, I can always take a rag if I wanted to and clean some of this up in some water, you know, and just fix it. What's the big deal? Nobody's perfect. You know, I took a risk right here, just put, just stretching this out, you know, cause, and I left a lot of that underneath color right there because I didn't want to cover it up all the way. I like it. Let's get a lot of that color in there. And then when it's real thin like that, you rub it, it just gives a very flat. Look how smooth that is. That's really, really flat. Um, but if that's the look you want, do that. Play around.
and you can see it's on the side it, it's nice and tight not as tight as a drum but tight enough smooth it's nice and smooth all the way down <laughs> You can now see the size of it. This is right before the details, which we are going to put on next.
There she is.